Hey there, my name is James Arlen. Some people know me as Mercurial. Mike? Hello? I'm talking on it. Is everybody hearing me? No. Hello? I'm not using that thing because you got to suck on them like a rock star, and I'm not a rock star today. Is it not working? Yeah, that's what I think. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Nodding, smiling, awesome. Um, standard disclaimer, because it needs to be said, we're going to talk about some crazy stuff. Uh, like I was saying, my name is James Arlen. Some of you know me as Mercurial. I'm an InfoSec geek. I've got a fair amount of experience, um, almost an obscene amount in some areas. Operations in verticals such as utilities and finance, which means I not only understand why we do things, I understand how we make money from doing them. Uh, and I do some crazy hacker kind of stuff like game show host, 9 p.m., track four. And uh, I'm still not an expert in anything. Uh, this is a talk not about SCADA, but about talking about SCADA. That feedback's going to drive me nuts for the next hour. Uh, there is some technical material, not a whole lot. Okay, You don't need to be an expert in anything in order to enjoy this. Uh, I am going to talk about Smart Grid. I'll talk about Stuxnet. Uh, and you're not going to end up being an expert when you walk out of today either. Uh, anybody who tells you they can teach you how to be an expert in SCADA anything in one talk needs to... <clears throat> so, about 2005, all of a sudden, the InfoSec industry noticed SCADA. <clears throat> That's a problem. They immediately started identifying it as a market. The simplest explanation is they ran out of markets. Uh, they, they, they'd done the Y2K stuff, they'd done the SOX 404 stuff, now what? I mean, this was before PCI came along and saved their bacon, but, you know, um, <clears throat> the simplest explanation is the easiest one. This is entirely about money, the regulators are starting to breathe heavy, and there was an opportunity for any of the major consulting firms to suddenly generate an entire cadre of experts in SCADA because, you know, a packet is a packet is a packet and we're just talking about packets, right? I mean, it's all just networking stuff. That's the only thing that's involved in SCADA is networks. Don't even get me started on the security religions, okay? Everybody a member of a security religion? Does everybody know the security religions? ISC squared, ISACA, and SANS. Bow down to your ethics. At this point, I'm working in control system security. I'm responsible for something that they never should have left me responsible for. Um, I spent as much time as I could pointing out these flawed responses. You know, when you're getting a crowd coming in from a Accenture or from a PwC, and they're coming in and they're saying to you, hey, we have the expertise to solve your problem. IBM shows up and says, we will solve your SCADA problems. <clears throat> A few dudes, a few dudettes, they showed up and they told me this. They said they knew how to solve the problems that I was having. They tied a nice little bow on it and they said very simply, you just need a few more blinky lights, a few more shiny things and everything will be fine. Uh, this is echoed today every time, because of the kinds of mailing lists I'm on, every time I log into my Gmail account, the little ad banner across the top invites me to buy ArcSight because it's the solution to my NERC CIP woes. <clears throat> I told you we we're going to talk about SCADA because there are entirely too many people talking about SCADA that are talking entirely out of their asses, and we're going to fix that. Here's the long form. This language stuff is really, really important. Specificity is the kind of thing that engineers get off on, and everybody who's involved in control systems is an engineer, okay? They're kind of like car people. If you use slightly the wrong term, they sort of giggle at you and send you back to the shade tree to learn how to be a mechanic, right? The information security profession is going to them and talking about how awesome the new synchro mesh transmission from Shimano is. It's got 10 speeds. Doesn't go well in your car. Not all SCADA is SCADA. Let's start with that. Um, the media loves it. Here's what real SCADA looks like. It's big stuff. It's highly distributed systems, the kind of systems that end up being an ephemeral fog because of the size of the geography they're stretched across. It's power lines, it's pipelines, it's interconnected sensors and controls under central management. Okay? Get that one stuck in your head, but good. SCADA is interconnected sensors and controls under central management. It's places where you need a bunch of math to happen. 
That's the key piece. You need a big honking server to do a bunch of extraordinarily complex math in the middle. That's supervisory control and data acquisition. A little bit of supervision at a gross level, but mostly data acquisition to enable the math to be able to be completed. Control systems, on the other hand, are little things like chemical plants and power plants and manufacturing companies. You find it in refineries, you find it in power generation, you find it in food. Lots of it in food. Donuts. <laughs> it's a lot of individual capabilities that are in and of themselves atomic with some orchestration. Okay, that's control systems. It's programmable logic controllers, which are so unbelievably awesome that they run ladder logic. Anybody remember taking ladder logic in CS 101? Anybody ever seen it since? The three people that answered yes work in control systems. <clears throat> These things run at cycles per second and in some cases cycles per minute. Okay, different kind of strange world. They get things bolted onto them to enable that cohesion amongst the different machines. So there's this TV show that my kids and I love to watch called How It's All Made. And it's the story of manufacturing, how, how the things that you take for granted are actually produced. And it's insanely complex. I mean, the machine that folds the wrapper for a stick of bubble gum is unbelievable. And that machine doesn't know a whole heck of a lot about the machine that folds the package for the bubble gum or the machine that slides the sticks of bubble gum into the package. Each one of those machines can operate alone. You shove paper into one of them and it spits out paper at the other end. The paper's nicely folded. It's depending on some coordination and some synchronization to pick up that piece of paper that it's about to eject and shove it into the machine that's got the bubblegum feeder attached to it, right? This is not terribly complex stuff. They work together towards a common process, but no manufacturing plant is a single machine. These are called industrial control systems or distributed control systems. These are smaller contained entities. You can wrap your arms around them from a geographic kind of perspective. When you try to wrap your arms around the power grid, you hug a continent, right? We're talking about things that fit into buildings, even if they're really big buildings like nuclear power plants. This lack of understanding about those two things, when you start hearing the media going on and on and on about these SCADA systems and how they're gonna create cyber cookies of cyber death, you gotta ask yourself, what the hell are they talking about? Because we know that SCADA is big ephemeral systems like pipelines. And it doesn't matter really at one point whether you're talking about a control system or whether you're talking about true SCADA systems, the computers aren't the things that you're controlling, okay? fit this into your heads in the tightest possible way. There have been talks at DEF CON for years about, hey, I found this neat SCADA protocol thing and I figured out how to make it go boom. If you break the computer, you're broken a computer. The computer isn't the thing that's being controlled. This is just like every other kind of information security there is. The computers are not the reason that you're involved. If you work for a company, what does the company do? There's some widget machine in the corner that cranks and money falls out of one end, but that's not anything to do with the computers that you're trying to protect. When Edna falls into the reactant vessel, the process stops. The exact same thing happens. When you break the computer, the process stops. The process stops all the time. It's a pain in the neck to clean up after. I mean, picture what a newsprint plant looks like. I mean, everybody's seen those pictures with the huge reams of paper slipping through all those things. Can you imagine rethreading one of those things? That would suck. But when Ed falls into it, tears his way through a piece of paper and goes in between two rollers, and you got Ed paste out the other end, you clean it up, you rethread the paper, you say I'm sorry to Ed's widow, and you get on with the day. Okay, if you break into the computer and you manage to blow it up, the paper mill, the, the, the printing plant is gonna end up with a big jam of paper stuck in it. Possibly some ed paste too. <clears throat> so this is what the data looks like. Everybody knows how to use Wireshark, right? Anybody not know how to use Wireshark? I'm the only one who doesn't know how to use Wireshark? That's awesome. 
I mean, the, the protocols have crazy names. I mean, you've got DMP3, you've got Landis and Geary, you got OPC, you got ControlNet, you got Modbus, you got TRW 955, zero. You've got this thing called ICCP, and, and you want to know how buggy? I mean, when you let engineers create stuff out of whole cloth, you end up with crap every single time. I'm not an engineer, and I'm sorry to any engineers that are out there. Um, there's this pro protocol called ICCP, and it's not the Cisco cache protocol. There's another one called ICCP. And the best part of it is that it embeds the entirety of ASN1. Yeah. Anybody know anyone who got an ASN1 parser correct? Ever? The, the, the data just looks like data. I mean, it's, wow, that's a one screen and it's a crappy screen. It, it's just a blob of bits. How do you get from the data to the process? That's the not trivial part. I mean, you can look up the codes in Modbus and you can say, wow, it says coil 13 is energized. I can send the command to de-energize coil 13. What the hell's coil 13 attached to? Is it attached to the donut machine? Because it's the only one I care about because I want the extra sauce on the donuts. I want to have a complete sugar crash. I mean, it takes years to put together the process map. When you look at how high-speed process control is done, when you look at how quickly they can do stuff, I mean, think of, everybody's seen the video of the ABB pick and place robots, the, the thing that goes down and it straightens out the sausages to put them in the thing and it picks up the pastries and stacks them. I mean, incredible high-speed stuff. Completely awesome, you know, Skynet is almost here kind of stuff. But how do you map from one to the other? That's the, the, the key piece. I mean, capturing the, the SCADA data as it flies by, capturing the process control data as it flies by, you don't know what the hell that stuff's connected to because the process is non-trivial. You know, one without the other doesn't work. I mean, okay, some of you, because, uh, oh, did you guys know the truism of all DEF CON talks? The person on stage is not the one who knows the most about the subject. There's somebody in the audience that knows more. So one of you out there is the superstar who can deconstruct that protocol and can puzzle it all out. I mean, we know we've got serious rock star reverse protocol people. There's probably a process engineer or two out there, you know, gaining information for the other side. But if you break the computer, that's one thing. And I'm sure you can do that. Okay, this is a truism of all process control. You can break it. But can you make it do your bidding? Sure. Let's take it as given that you can do it, that you can make the, the cookies have a special slice of cyber goo in the middle instead of the regular white goo that you peel off with your teeth because you're that good that you know, you, you've managed to put bleach into there because, of course, there's always a bleach vessel attached to the cookie generation plant. <laughs> <clears throat> you still didn't break all the controls. You forgot about safety. In every process control system, whether it's big SCADA power grids, whether it's big manufacturing nuclear control, if it's an entire auto plant, or whether it's the place that makes the donuts, it doesn't matter. There's always safety systems. There's always systems that are there to prevent Edna from falling into the reactant vessel. There are always systems there to say, before you run the multi-ton press, that's gonna punch that part out, you have to have both hands on the controls. There's a bunch of safety systems there. There's a bunch of preparation to say, we know that humans are gonna screw up. And we know that machines are going to screw up because they're gonna go out of alignment or they're gonna fall out of synchronization. Bad things are going to happen. You screw up the process, you manage to get that bleach embedded in those cookies because of the bleach vessel that was mistakenly attached to the system by the process control people. You messed with that batch. You messed with it so bad that it fell out of specification and the testing people caught it and they threw the whole batch out. Maybe they didn't catch it until after they shipped it. They still throw the whole batch out. Not the 10 containers that you managed to screw up, but the entire batch that day's run or that week's run or that month's run, they throw it out because it's too important to them. The organization needs to make sure that exactly the right products with exactly the right specifications make it out the door. And your meddling will make products that are out of specifications. And none of these systems are autonomous. Not a single one of them. 